Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I am your host Jack and this is another video tutorial of Photoshop Elements. In this video I kind of wanted to take you outside of Elements a little bit and we're going to look at uh, RAW and what RAW uh, pictures are actually all about. So first let me uh, say thanks to everyone out there that's been picking up the DVD been a, a great response um, and I'm very pleased I, I can tell you the DVD can be picked up if you still want a copy go to jackstechcorner.com you've seen it on the opening uh, slide of the show stop over for $15 you pick up 46 great high-resolution um, Windows media files <clears throat> of what else Photoshop elements you can sit, you can pause and play these things, you can minimize them, um, you know, and work on the uh, actual Photoshop elements. Where it really, really comes in nice, um, maybe you have a, a widescreen monitor, you can open up elements in part of it and run the video in the other part of it. So it works really great there also. So once again, that's jackstechcorner.com. Click on the Buy It Now button and pick up your copy. It's only $15. It's a great DVD. Next... Um, stop over my sponsor's website, greenscreenwizard.com. I see Ken also has uh, the green screens on sale, portable green screen. I think I'm going to pick one of these things up. $30, and it packages up into a little package. You can carry the thing anywhere. You know, shoot some pictures and uh, put, these, put, put your friends and folks on many, many different backgrounds. It's a really great, uh, great piece of equipment to have there with your uh, camera. And pick up the green screen uh, wizard software. And I'm sure you'll be really, really impressed. Look back through my channel, watch the uh, videos, and I'm sure you'll see that it's a worthwhile piece of software to have. It's a plug-in for Adobe, and it's also a standalone program. Okay, so as I said, we're going to talk about Camera Raw and what Camera Raw is. First, I'm going to try to explain it to you. Then I want to show you the files that it actually creates. And then we'll look at the editing aspect of it. First... If you have a 35mm DSLR, or some of the point-and-shoot cameras actually, like the bigger Fuji cameras and such, have a feature where you can save your picture as Camera Raw. Now what Camera Raw is, is the camera does nothing to the picture. It just captures a very high resolution uh, picture. Now a lot of people tell me, Jack, we don't like to do this because it takes up our memory just so fast. Um, for the benefits of it, buy an extra memory disk because the difference is when your camera captures a file in JPEG it's actually compressing the file it's taking that image and compressing it down into a JPEG format and that's why the file size is a little smaller it compresses the color and everything down with a raw file when you get back to your editor you can actually adjust everything that the camera would adjust white balance uh, the tint and you'll see all that in just a minute. So first let me show you the files that it creates. Now my camera personally is a Nikon camera. It captures two different files. It has an NEF file and an XMP file. Now this is a Nikon specific type file format. Uh, your Canon may have a different one. And you know if you want to jump over to the forums if you have a Canon or if you have some of the other popular cameras out there let us know what the file format is um, when you shoot in RAW because I'm not really sure what those file extensions would be. Now the difference is if you look at a JPEG file, let's take this one up here for instance and if we right click on it look at the properties we can see here the size is 3.78 megabytes alright that's our JPEG file and that's a high full resolution because I shoot everything on fine on my camera I don't normally turn it down or anything because I want as much uh, information there I can play with or edit or if I want to do some cropping. Now, let's look at the NEF file. And we'll look at that with the XMP file because it's a two-part file. Now, you see, it's, it's just a little bit more than double. It's 8.97 megabytes in size. So it is bigger. It's definitely a bigger file. Now I'm going to show you what's nice about these, and I'm going to give you a word of caution also. The 
Uh, word of caution is, one time when shooting a wedding, I thought, I'll do all the portraits in RAW. When you shoot in RAW, now you can't take just this file, this NEF file, and take it to the developer and get it developed. You have to compress it and turn it into a JPEG file to take it out to one of your print shops or to upload it somewhere. So that's the word of caution with that. Um, so if you want to do a few shots in it, I did uh, probably more the other night just to do this video than I actually wanted to. But it'll give you an idea of how you actually work with these things. Let's get out of here. Let's go back into my organizer. Now, in the organizer they come up as JPEG or Photoshop Elements can read your raw files. And if it can't, check out Adobe's website and see if they don't have an update or something for your camera so the program will read your raw files. So you'll be able to see the thumbnails. Let's go into one of these now like we're going to edit it. We would normally click on it. We're going to right click it and we're going to go to full edit. Now when we do that, if you notice this new box, this is a box that we haven't worked with before and we haven't seen this box before. This is actually the camera raw and uh, this is the camera raw editor. Once Elements sees your camera raw uh, file, it's going to open this up first because it knows that you want to do some work on it before you're actually saving it as a JPEG file. Now here's the type of things we can do with this. White balance. You can see the white balance here. You can actually adjust your white balance in here just like you would in the camera so you can get different looks at this picture. Let's see what a daylight look would be. All right, we're going to look at a daylight. My computer here will keep up with me. Okay, there's a daylight view. There's a cloudy view. So you get a chance to see what different lighting might help you out in your actual picture. There's a fluorescent. There's a fluorescent view. And you can see it gives us different tones because we're changing the white balance in the picture. Let's now look at temperature. We can adjust the temperature of the light. So you have that option. You can also adjust the tint. Just a tint. We can adjust exposure. We can go to underexposing it or overexposing. So it gives you all these adjustments after you've taken the picture. You can add some fill light. I normally leave the fill light and the recovery off. You can adjust your blacks, your brightness, your contrast. Gives you a chance to adjust those. The clarity, you can actually uh, adjust the clarity of the picture. And there you go. The vibrance. So it gives you a way just to adjust the picture based on your remembering the picture. The camera didn't do any of this adjusting at all for you. It didn't do any of the compressing. And there we go. Now we have the choice of actually saving the image right here. We can click here. We can actually save the picture out. We would change the, the file extension would be a DNG on this if you would save it here. Or what I normally do is, once you get to this point, you can go ahead and open image. That's when we're going to be back in our normal editor, and we're going to start to do some editing on this picture. You would just do your basic edits, whatever it may be. Um, you could do the, uh, you can add more brightening here. You can use your levels.
we can maybe brighten that up a little bit. Adjust the contrast down a little bit. You could do some cropping maybe if you want. We'll fit this to window. There you go. So there you have it. I just wanted to introduce you a little bit to Camera Raw and show you that you can work with Camera Raw in Elements. Works really well. But as you see here, the last thing I want to show you is we still have that NEF format. Remember, you can't take an NEF file into your developer and get it printed. So go to File, Save As, save it in the version set with the original, but this time let's change this to JPEG. Now we'll just save that out, save it at maximum quality. You see now it's actually 6.4 megabytes. Remember we started a file with what, 8.9 something. We're going to save that out. Let's look at our organizer and now we see that we have that picture here. We actually did some edits to it. We cleaned it up a little bit, took out a little bit of that tint, and there you have it. There. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on shooting camera raw. Uh, if your camera will do it, you know, turn on camera raw every now and then and experiment. Bring it into elements and play around a little bit with your picture and see what the different aspects you can play with it with the different white balances. Myself personally, you know, if I'm out shooting something, I'll try a couple different white balances and at least look at the screen on the back of the camera to get an idea of what's working for me. So it's always good not to always leave your camera on auto white balance. Play with those settings. Until next time, folks, keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.